got into photography when I went to Vietnam. Okay. Uh, the problem is I've never had an expensive camera, so I was using a box camera at the time. I think it was a brownie. And um, uh, I just shot the uh, environment that I was in, and I have a, I have a, uh, an album here somewhere of uh, the pictures that I shot. Welcome to Connections. My name is Glenn Gould with Dry Cleaning Connection, and we're here today with my good friend, Ron Kupferberg of RK Studios. Ron, I'm really excited to hear more about your studio and what you do. And of course, you know, I know you, and um, but our friends don't. So why don't you tell them a little bit about you and what RK Studios is? Okay. That's a long story, but uh, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Uh, RK Studios is uh, a it's basically my name and our initials spelled out, A-R for R and K, K-A-Y for K, Kupferberg. Um, and uh, it's here in my, the studio is here in my home. And I've been doing uh, photography for probably 50 years, um, professionally for probably 35 years. And uh, so I've been in the business for quite a while. Um, I started in New York City, where uh, I uh, was. My career started as a graphic designer. Oh, really? Now, where who were you working for there? Um, when I got out of college, um, I I got a job with a small design studio that was doing little drawings for newspapers and magazines uh, to advertise Mattel toys. Huh. I probably saw a lot of your work. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was into Mattel toys about oh, really? that time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it was a short-lived program, uh -huh. um, and it was like two guys and me. Um, they hired me out of school, so the money was, I think, I don't even think I made 65 bucks a week at that time. Anyway, the point is that uh, they started me in, in with the, the knowledge uh, or the uh, refine the knowledge that I had from college and help me get a little bit more, more further in my life. And where'd you go to school? I went to New York City Community College. Okay. For, it's a two-year program. Uh -huh. um, I didn't have uh, the desire to go to a four-year college sure. because I was always interested in creativity, doing creative stuff around the house. Yeah. Um, and you got the world's greatest college when it comes to creativity, right? In your backyard, New York. I mean, oh, my for goodness. sure. Yeah. For sure. I was blessed that way. And um, yeah, so I said, and it's a very, it was very expensive. You know, yeah. school is, college was very expensive for my family. Sure. Uh, and I'm an only child. Now, where, where'd you grow up in New York? In Jackson Heights, Queens. Jackson Heights, Queens. I've, I've been through there a couple of times. Uh, in, in a past life, I lived on the island. Oh, and uh, okay. so every once in a while, go into the city. Yeah, but, we yeah. were very close to LaGuardia Airport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so I went to school there and started in this little studio. And within six months, I uh, was out looking for another job because they couldn't afford to keep me. And um, uh, I started with an advertising agency that I happened to be in line for... Um, extra courses in the local schools, art schools. Right. And the guy in front of me was one of the uh, graphic designers that worked for this advertising agency that was also looking to... Uh, Perfect to timing. Perfect timing. So we got together. He introduced me to the art director at this advertising agency, and they hired me, and it was, uh, it was uh, a good program for the first seven months that I worked there. And then I got drafted. Oh my goodness! So you you went where? 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 I mean, as far as service, um, I went to basic training at Fort Gordon. Okay, and that was my introduction to Georgia and my first time doing anything outside of New York City. Okay, and um, within uh, another seven months of that, oh, after um, uh, I was I went through basic training. Yeah. I was immediately assigned to the provost marshal's office um, as a clerk typist. <laughs> okay. And um, but actually, what they had me do was uh, uh, graphic design for them. I was making little uh, desk plaques. So once them. again, your experience and your and your passion kind of fit. 
It did. And, and, it, it, did. and it kept you out of being deployed, I guess. Wrong. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, what I was about to say is that uh, I was working directly for the uh, uh, provost marshal, mm -hmm. and um, he liked me, wanted me to um, uh, proceed in that uh, vein of what I was doing sure. through my career as a two-year uh, inductee. Mm -hmm. And um, he was ready to pull the plug and keep me there. And he died of a heart attack. Oh, no. It was oh, during no. the lunchtime. I'll never forget it. Within a week or so of that, I got my orders for Vietnam. And how long did you spend in Vietnam? 365 days. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for your service. I know that it wasn't your choice, but maybe maybe you were happy to do it. But uh, either way, thank you for your well, service. Well, yeah, it wasn't my choice for sure. I would want it, I would have wanted to go to Germany, but of yeah. course, because my parents... Uh, actually spoke German. They were. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the last time I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would have worked. Of course, it would have been ideal, but uh, it didn't work out that now, way. Now, were they from Germany or? My they father were... was from uh, Poland or Czechoslovakia at the time. Okay. And my mother was born in East Africa. Really? Yeah. She was born in uh, what is now Tanzania, but it was Tanganyika at the time. Uh -huh. And my grandparents uh, on her side, or my mother's grandparents, uh, parents, were um, uh, import-export. They owned an import-export company out of Germany. So they spoke German. Right. And they moved back to Germany when my wife was, uh, my wife, my, my mom was only four years old. Wow. So, I mean, you, you know, you find out people live in New York and, you know, so many of them have such rich history in their background and and you, you're no different. It's uh, you know a lot of different influences oh, that yeah. came into your life. So, sure. so you got out of you. You were um, uh, discharged after Vietnam. Yes. Okay. Yes. And where'd you go? I went right back to that advertising agency that um, hired me. Yeah. Um, it was a law that they had to hire me right. back. Right. Right. And um, I worked for them for another year. And the some of the um, people uh, have had changed the employees that. It, and some one especially was somebody that I had to work for uh -huh. and with, and I didn't care for him at all. So I started looking for another job. And um, I got one with another design studio. And long story short, again, my, my uh, experience was expanded. Yep. And um, uh, I had some interesting accounts that uh, don't ask me what they were, but they... Uh, they just kept me, my mind thinking, and the people that I was working in the small studio, with it was like four other people. Uh, they were pretty creative, and they just, you know, they just kept me sharp. Interesting, interesting. So from there, I went to a uh, a um, pharmaceutical advertising agency, which was huge. Um, uh, it was William Douglas McAdams. If, if they're still in existence, I'll be just. I'll be surprised, but they were in New York City, right? And um, they they handled millions and millions of dollars of advertising and promotion for their clients. Um, but I was only doing a very segmented part of design, and I didn't care for that, so I kept looking for other. This seems this seems like a a recurring theme in your in your you like change. Uh, I, yeah, I, I get bored pretty quickly, I guess you could say that. Which is good if you're a photographer because you're always changing and always seeing different things. Well, here's the caveat now. I have not started even into my photography. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm saying that you're obviously, that, that it's gone forward, so it will be good. But Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, from William Douglas McAdams, I moved to uh, corporate through, uh, I don't even remember how I got to know the job. I think it was... New York Times um, was looking for a um, graphic design and art director uh, uh, capabilities. And I said, oh, I'll try it. What have I got to lose? So it was uh, Cheeseboro Ponds. Right. You're probably familiar oh, with Oh, absolutely. That. Okay. Absolutely. Ponds Cold Cream. I know that one for and sure. And Vaseline. Yeah, that's right. Lotion. There's lots of products. Yeah. Yep. Not only lots of products in, in the health and beauty products area, which is what I was responsible for hired to be responsible for mm -hmm. in terms of packaging and uh, promotional design. Um, the, uh, that, that particular company owned Prince Rackets at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, so that was during the time when, when the big corporate 
con- conglomerations where they, you know, you got RJR Nabisco and things like that Correct. coming together. Yeah. Correct. And, uh, yeah. And uh, they were in Greenwich, Connecticut. I was living w- with my then wife mm-hmm. in, um, in Rico Park, Queens. And uh, it was taking me about an hour to get to work every day. And I said, we got to move now. We did have uh, um, a, my daughter at, uh, shortly after I got hired. So that kind of convinced us that, yeah, it's time to move. Okay. And we were able to find a house in Norwalk, Connecticut, mm-hmm. yep. which was about a half an hour away from Greenwich. And uh, I stayed there for eight years. Um, and uh, then I said, I'm going to try my own do my own thing. By the way, when I was at um, uh, Cheeseboro, they, uh, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of photographers uh, in the work that I had done. And these photographers were in New York City. And I, it was a short commute. Greenwich sure. is right on the border. Right. People who live in New York on the island or have shorter or have longer distances to travel. Sure. So uh, that's what gave me my experience in terms of techniques. Yeah. So you've got all this graphic design and advertising background. So you you know how to make things look good and you know what people want to look at and where they want to look at it and things like that. So I guess uh, jump forward to where you you got into photography. I, I was... I would say I got into photography when I went to Vietnam. Okay. Uh, the problem is I've never had an expensive camera, so I was using a box camera at the time. I think it was a brownie. And um, uh, I just shot the uh, environment that I was in, and I have, a, I have a, uh, an album here somewhere of uh, the pictures that I shot around the camp that I was okay. uh, in, so you always kind of had that interest. Oh, it was part and, of my job. And so uh, I know that you you had obviously a very ex- extensive and rich um, corporate career. Mm-hmm. Uh, you tried to do your own thing. Did that pan out? I didn't try to. Well, no, it it didn't pan out to what I thought it could be. Right. But it became a freelance job, basically. Okay. So it was yes, it was my own job. Sure. My own. But it wasn't a company. What they would have called was, today a, a gig. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, would, yeah okay. Yeah. So you, you obviously, it sounds to me like you stayed in the corporate world until you retired? No. No. Were you, <laughs> how did you end up in Georgia? I guess that's okay, really the, well, the question. Okay. That's the question. Then I can answer that. Um, through a lot of other uh, changes in job functions, um, I was in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin working for a uh, company called uh, Shopco, which is a uh, something like a Caldor or mm-hmm. a, uh, Walmart. So right. To speak. And um, uh, they were not doing well and had to let me go. Uh, I was actually hired by somebody who recommended me and hired me as she was an executive from, at Caldor, which is another uh, department store chain. Right in the Northeast, uh, Shopco is basically in the Midwest to West Coast at the time. And um, so she got me a job there when Caldor went out of business. And I started there for about a year. I was there and um, they had been losing money also. So I found myself looking for another job. And I found I didn't want to stay in Green Bay. Right. So I found a job in uh, Peachtree City called Goody Products. Okay. All right. So I worked for Goody Products for a while. And um, now that's like nail clippers and combs yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Hair products for especially women and stuff like that. And um, now they still they here? Were, uh, they're in the north side of Atlanta. Okay. Now they move. They were, uh, they're a, a division of Newell Rubbermaid. Right. So um, anyway, um, I, uh, I didn't want to move with them. And um, I just said, you know, I'm going to leave. And at that point, I was 55. And is this where you made the big change? This is where I started. Yeah, this yeah. is where I started. I, but my change wasn't in photography. It was whatever I wanted to do. Okay. Okay. And, and I didn't. It's hard to explain because what I got into was what I was doing 
something of when I was in the military, and that is uh, I was um, I got into security. When I was hired by the uh, provost marshal, that's part of the the MPs. Mm -hmm. I had to do some MP work like traffic control and and this kind of stuff. And so you got into security and then you decided that it was time to be a police officer. Yeah, well, yes. Um, actually, I started as an unarmed uh, uh, a security officer and then uh, I said, you know, the money is where armed officers made. Yeah. Got some. So I started working as an armed office, officer uh, for, the, um, for some uh, government uh, agencies in Atlanta. And um, and some private agencies or private companies sure. as well. And then some of the guys I was working with uh, at one point said, "Hey, you know, College Park is looking for police officers. Are you, you know, interested?" And um, I said, uh, "You know, I'm 59 years old. 59, and, and you're going to become a police officer. Well, uh, go to the academy. They, yeah, they said. Uh, you know, I said, well, who's going to hire me at 59 years yeah. old, especially the police department?" And they said, well, what have you got to lose? So myself and three other guys um, took the test. Two of them flunked out. Myself and another guy passed the, that particular test. Right. We went on through taking psychological tests, physical tests, blah, 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 on infinitum. And finally, the uh, College Park Police Department offered me a job. And how long did you serve? I served in College Park for a year. Yeah. And then I went to Palmetto for four and a half years. Okay. In Palmetto. And um, after that, I went to Fairburn and uh, wrote out the last part, and I was 65 at the time. Okay. And I said, now is the time that I'm going to start my photography business. So you started, you started when you retired from the police force? Yes. Okay. And, and it's always been here? Yes. Well, that's great. Yeah. Now... Tell us a little bit about the types of work that you do. Um, you know who, like a you know a typical client is, what they're looking for, and um, and you know kind of just give us that background. Well, um, um, I advertise that I shoot headshots. Um, I've I started uh, doing fashion. Mm -hmm. I've done fashion. Um, and, um, and you do product too, don't you? I do product photography for catalogs or promotional material. Right. Uh, um, what else do I do? Uh, I take uh, shoot events. Right. You did. As a matter of fact, Ron did uh, served us uh, with Southeastern Assistance and Healthcare for our big casino night last year. Thank you very much for that. And beautiful pictures. So, I mean, mostly you're a people photographer, though. Yes, for the most part, because. Because landscapes don't necessarily pay you, but people do. Yeah, <laughs> you, you get the you get the pun. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, I mean, you can pretty much do anything. If somebody wanted a, photo, a, a photograph of a particular landscape, you're happy to do that. Um, briefly, how challenging is it? Because a lot of our um, viewers are people who are in business, and we've all had some interesting challenges. Certainly, I'm sure COVID was interesting for you, just like it was all of us. But in just the after world or the before world, let's not focus on COVID, it, it has to be challenging in your industry, especially because everyone walks around with a camera nowadays yes. and everybody thinks they're a photographer. Yes. And of course, these companies are selling these products based on, I mean, like I've, I've forgotten the one that uh, I guess it's Android that had the big uh, low light thing recently, yeah. a couple, what, about a year ago. The cell phones? Yeah, yeah. yeah with, you know, it'll take pictures in low light yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So um, those are great for capturing those in life moments, but I just I think that you really have to understand that when you're capturing something that's going to be a permanent fixture, something that you know you want to remember for the rest of your life in a way that was you know different than just oh look right. That's when they come to a professional photographer. If they're wise, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, there's certainly a difference between, I think, a professional photographer's view and, and equipment than uh, a cell phone. You can get lucky with a cell phone, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. and I've taken many shots with cell phones, but it's it's limited in, in the, 
in the uh, variety of, of lens that you have, the ability to change the lens. Sure. Uh, take a very close macro shot of, of something that could be very interesting and, uh, or, uh, you know, just a flower and how you can put it on uh, something like Photoshop and make it, you know, a piece of art. Yeah, I first noticed the difference when my son invested in, in an expensive camera. Obviously, it's been a lot of years now, so it's, it's not quite as state-of-the-art as it was, but then he started taking photographs of events that I was working when I was at the Noonan Coweta Chamber, and he would take pictures of, of like table settings and things like that. It's just like, wow. I mean, it's so much different. It's yeah. so much different. It, it's almost like, for me, it brings, it brings things to life. They, they, I guess it's the contrast. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have an eye for it, but I'm sure that you know, there's a reason for it. But it, it's just it's just there. So, if if somebody were to want to have some photographs by you, um, how would they get in touch with you? Well, they could go on my website, um, uh, RK Studios, A R K A Y S T U D I O S dot com. Okay. And there is a uh, place at the after you can review all the pictures and kind of genres that I take uh, in my career. Um, there is a place for uh, contact information. Cool. You know, one of the great things about your place being in your home, um, I, I know that, you know, some people might think that's a little unusual. I, they would have a long time ago. Now, probably not. But the, the great thing is, is that it's, you see everything is here. You know that everything necessary to do a great job is here. And yet you don't feel that uncomfortable feeling of walking into a retail location where it's, it's a little stiffer. It's a little more controlled. Um, I, I mean, it's a very comfortable atmosphere here. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, that's not to say I don't do things on location. Oh, no, I'm sure you do. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you do. Yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, you did, like I said, you did for us, and you, I've heard you've done for so many other organizations. A um, little personal real quick, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, you've lived here in, in uh, this area, what, eight years? Uh, 20. 20. Years. Well, in Peachtree, yeah, okay, 20 years. Yeah. But in this in this, in this this location, you, how long you live in this? 20 years in 20 this years. house. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got confused. Yeah. So you've lived here 20 years, and I'm sure that you've been to a lot of places. What's your favorite thing about living in, in the area that you live in, in between Peachtree City and Noonan in the Sharpsburg region? What's? I think the – I've learned to really love this area because uh, – First of all, I've I've grown to know a lot of people. Right. Uh, when I was doing security at Pinewood Atlanta Studios, um, I was the uh, person that per people um, would come and uh, if they went to the uh, Anna Brothers Cafe, um, they would see me first because they'd have to sign in. And uh, on Wednesday mornings, they have the... Uh, services the religious services at in the um, Hannah brothers and uh, I just realized how many more people I've met doing that for the four years that I was there wow yeah um, and um, while I'm now on my own um, I see them walking around so I feel very comfortable it feels like home it really it, it really it's it it's it's an interesting area how easy it is to to feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, the people are pretty pretty doggone great here. You really um, and so um, I, I ask this one every once in a while: favorite restaurant in the area? Um, I like to. I don't have. Let me qualify that. There is a Japanese restaurant that I have never been to, but I know the owner Alvin. Mm -hmm. um, that he just opened up a restaurant called Sensu in. Trillith, okay. the town of Trillith. Right. I haven't been there yet because it's I couldn't get a reservation. But I'm sure if he's anything like he is and was at Ginza, which was his place in okay. Peachtree City, um, I'm, that would be my favorite place. Well, super. Simple as that. So, Ron, thanks so much for taking time today and giving us a history of, you, of, you know, what has, you, you know, everybody's background develops and then... It has an impact on what they do in the future. Um, we're the sum total of our you know, interactions and thoughts. And to have such an unbelievably diverse background, um, it, it really probably it makes it 
more easy for you to bring out the diverse backgrounds of other people when you shoot them. So I, I'm sure that, and I've seen your work, it's, it's amazing. Um, so I want to thank you for taking time with us today. And um, once again, if somebody wants to get in touch with Ron Kupferberg to have some work done, it's RK Studios. That's A-R-K-A-Y studios.com. And uh, Ron, just thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.